interesting facts about famous people. Underrated performances in Western movies. Following on from my previous videos on the underrated, I'm taking a look at some underrated performances in Westerns today. The Western genre has been making great movies over the last century. Here are just a few of the great underrated performances along the way. A popular film genre since the silent film era, hitting its peak in the 50s with the help of stars like John Wayne, Gary Cooper, Randolph Scott and more. With heroes and villains and damsels in distress, a baked in American genre, all about the Western spirit and destiny. If you like this video, please head over to my channel and take a look at the many other videos I have made. The link is in the description. Apologies up front for any mispronunciations of names. Let's take a look at some of the more underrated performances in the Western genre. Okay, let's get started. Iggy Pop and Billy Bob Thornton as Sally and Big George, Dead Man, 1995. To say that Dead Man is a different kind of Western is an understatement. Johnny Depp's William Blake is on the run in this postmodern black and white world with a Native American companion who calls himself nobody and a quirky supporting cast, including Crispin Glover to Robert Mitchum. Like in most films, sometimes it is the lesser characters whose stories you want to know. Billy Bob Thornton as a gruff mountain a man with concerns what? about who his hair, and Iggy Pop, a cross-dressing fur trader with a thing for the Bible, who could have, should have, had their own films. Catherine Ross as Etta Place, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, 1969. Usually when we talk about this classic 60s western, there's little room to discuss anyone other than Paul Newman and Robert Redford as the main characters. With good reason. They're both pretty good in their roles. But Catherine Ross's at a place as Sundance's lover added another element to the pair's battle-scarred friendship. Etta is quiet and stalwart, although not without a sense of humour, putting up with their shenanigans, even a few bank robberies, but refuses to stay for the bloody finale. She may be Sundance's woman, but the charming bicycle riding scene with Butch provides a small glimpse into what might have been. Guy Pearce as Second Lieutenant John Boyd, Ravenous, 1999, giving a subtle, conflicted performance as Second Lieutenant John Boyd, a cowardly Civil War veteran whose great moment in battle only comes because he was hiding in a pile of corpses, exiled to a remote garrison with other outcasts. Boyd thinks all he will have to contend with is his conscience, that is, until Robert Carlyle's Colonel Ives comes along with a hideous tale of cannibalism. Carlyle takes up a lot of the screen, chewing, swallowing and spitting out scenery. However, Pierce is captivating as his options narrow, forced to decide whether to become a cannibal like Carlyle's mad Colonel Ives, or kill Ives and himself before things get out of control. John Hurt as Jelen Lamb, The Proposition, 2005. Written and scored by musician Nick Cave. A stark, brutal Australian Western with many moments of touching beauty and horrendous violence. Guy Pearce as a man who must hunt down one of his brothers to save the other. John Hurt only has a couple of scenes as a drunken, racist bounty hunter, but he's a throwback to classic Westerns, caked in filth and spouting nonsense that sounds Shakespearean. He also does a great death rattle. The film contains many stellar performances, particularly Emily Watson as the wife of Ray Winston's police captain, David Gulpilil as the Aboriginal tracker, and Richard Wilson as the brother being held as ransom. Pina Pelicia as Louisa Longworth, One-Eyed Jacks, 1961. It's difficult to get noticed in a film with Marlon Brando and Carl Malden. Brando plays Rio, who has just escaped jail, having been betrayed years back by his old partner, Dan Longworth, Molden. Rio plans to kill Longworth, now the sheriff, but Rio falls in love, after a fashion, with Longworth's stepdaughter Louisa, Pina Policia. Innocent and naive against Rio's thuggishness, Louisa stands up to her stepfather against him with a raw vulnerability. Ben Foster as Charlie Prince, 310 to Yuma, 2007. As Russell Crowe's violent sidekick, Ben Foster's Charlie Prince has a deadpan, sinister demeanour. Without a backstory, his evil doesn't seem to have impetus behind it. 
other than a real innate desire to be evil. Russell Crowe and Christian Bale are riveting experienced actors, but whenever Foster isn't around, you're just waiting till he's back. The most intriguing thing is his strong loyalty to Crowe's Wade. This hair came. Chief Dan George as Old Lodge Skins, Little Big Man, 1970. An ambitious film with a cast of characters including Wild Bill Hickok, General George Custer, and Dustin Hoffman as a 121-year-old white man, Jack Crabb, captured by the Cheyenne when he was a child, surviving massacres, battles, ambushes, and other tragedies, engaging with a colourful cast of characters, both fictional and historical, along the way. One such fictional character is Old Lodgkins, the Cheyenne leader who adopts Crabb as his grandson after surviving his first massacre. Chief Dan George was a chief of the Canadian, wait for it, Slil Watut Nation, cast in his first acting job at 60, bringing a tender, steady presence to Crab's life, as well as some unexpected humour in, in their last scene together. Yes, Later, he was nominated for a Best Supporting Actor. Hey. Later, he was nominated for a Best Supporting Actor Oscar for his role in the outlaw Josie Wales. I was afraid of that. Patricia Neal as Alma, HUD. 1963. Father and son Homer, Melvin Douglas and Hud, Paul Newman, live together in a state of constant tension on the family ranch, witnessed by Hud's teen nephew and Neil's Alma, the housekeeper. Hud is a drunk, womanizer, and unsavory character, saved only by that Paul Newman charm. And Alma, having been burned in the past by men just like him, walks a line between flirtation and keeping him at arm's length. Family hostility bubbles over as the men struggle for control of the ranch before catastrophe hits the livestock. Hud's attempted sexual assault of Alma seems almost a footnote to the rest of the film. Patricia Neal plays her as a hard-edged woman, while vulnerable inside, resigned to the treatment she gets from men like Hud. Leaving town, it's almost inevitable that she'll end up somewhere much the same. Jean-Louis Tritignon as Gordon, or Silence, The Great Silence, 1968. You'd better be subtle if you're acting against someone like Klaus Kinski. Jean-Louis Tritignon does just that. The fact that his character is a mute, the feat of acting he delivers is even more impressive. Kinski is a bounty killer named Loco, who killed Silence's parents and sliced his vocal cords when he was a child. Now grown, Silence joins forces with the bandits that Loco hunts through a mountain range. He has a reputation for tricking his enemies into drawing their guns first. Technically, he only kills in self-defense. Silence's vulnerability is assumed by the audience due to his muteness and the loss of his parents, but he's able to express much through just the flick of his eyes, while Kinski's Loco thrashes about in this wintry spaghetti western. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me your comments. I really appreciate your likes, shares and subscribing. As always, please hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take it easy. Bye for now.